G'day! Okay, this is the video for lesson two of this quadratics graphing section. Uh, when you're messing around formulas in the previous two sections, you may have stumbled upon doing things like this, just for the fun of it, y equals 2x squared. And if you draw a series of tables for this, and, you know, go through the text that accompanies with this video, plot some points, you'll find, it's again, a symmetrical U-shaped graph. At zero, it's two times zero squared. At one, it's two times one squared. So instead of being one high, it's now two high. Um, at two, and negative two, it's now two times two squared, or two times negative two squared is two times four is eight. So it's actually double the height at each output. And you'll find that it's now going to be a steeper U-shaped graph than you had before. If you compare it, you might want to actually check values. Y equals X squared might be broad, whereas Y equals 2X squared is actually pretty steep. So I'm just going to say, I'll call this number, I don't know, the steepness factor. I don't want to say slope, because slope makes you think of straight lines. There are definitely not straight lines involved here, so I'll just use the word steepness. And how would I get an even steeper graph? Well, what if I did a bigger steepness factor, like Y equals 200X squared? And you might want to plot some points, put in zero, it's still zero, it's still going through the uh, origin here. But put in x equals one or negative one, it's now 200 times one squared, so it's now 200 high. It's going to be massively steep. Uh, instead of being steep, can I make the graph actually broader? And that takes a little bit of thinking, but after, you know, a moment's thought, and sadly I'm about to give away the answer, which is always kind of, kind of um, unfortunate. You might, instead of doing a number that's big, like 200, do a number that's small and close to zero, like 1 over two, 1 two hundredth x squared. And you might want to play with this, work with the text, go through the examples of the text, and you might see, and you'll see that this is a, again, it is a symmetrical U-shaped graph, but it's just going to be very slow in getting up there. For example, put in 1, you get 1 two hundredth of x squared, 1 squared, which is 1 two hundredth, very low. 2 squared would be 1 two hundredth of 4, very low. It's creeping up, but it'd be very low. But actually, I said a positive number here, which makes me think, what if I put in a negative number in front, like did negative steepness, like was negative x squared. Now if you do that, and we'll just be plotting points, just always no shame in plotting points. I'll put x equals zero, I'll get negative zero squared, still zero. Put in one and negative one, I get negative one squared, or negative negative one squared, that's going to be negative one, down yonder. Put in two, negative four, or put in negative two, negative four. And if you're very slow and careful, like I'm not being in this video, though go through the notes, read the text carefully, go through it, work it with pencil and paper in hand, do the practice, you'll see this actually is just an upside down version of y equals x squared. So now we've got a sense of what the steepness factor is doing. Um, what if I wanted a very broad upside down U shape? And you might think to do something like y equals negative 0.00003 times x squared, for example. Now I bet that's pretty broad, and I'm sure it's going to be upside down. If you're ever in doubt, just plot a few points, get a feel for it. So this is lovely. Let's take all the work we've done so far. We've done three things. We've done y equals x squared, and we've done things like add a number at the end, which it turns out adds five to all the outputs and shift things up, or negative, shift things down. We've done things like change the value of what behaves like zero. Here in x minus five squared, the number five is now behaving like zero. So whatever the graph of y was actually was doing before at zero, it's now doing it at the position five. So it's just moved it over to some other spot. And now we've got steepness factors involved. That makes the graph steeper. So let's now work on combining all three effects in one hit. But I need to clean the board to do that. Okay, let's combine all three effects. Suppose we're asked to give a sketch of y equals two x minus three squared plus 10. Okay, there's a lot going on there. Um, given how we've been trained in algebra to sort of read through a certain order of operations, we've had a social convention that you always do what's in, most, in the parentheses first. The first thing we do when we evaluate this guy is look at the x minus three part, which is telling me inside the parentheses, three is behaving like zero. So what the graph was doing at zero is now doing it at three instead. So I know things are gonna be sort of placed around the value x equals three. I also see a steepness factor involved. So I see it's going to be a very steep value, a steep uh, U-shaped graph shifted with x equals 3 being where the vertex is, the, 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 the pointy bit, sort of pointy point. And then the last thing we see, we've got a plus 10 going on, which means all the outputs have been shifted up 10 units. Oh, so it's going to be one of these U-shaped graphs. Now, normally it was at 0. It's going to be positioned at 3. 
it's going to be made steeper because of the 2, and everything's shifted up 10 because everything, all 10 is being added to the outputs. So it must be a fairly steep U-shaped graph looking like that. Our little piece of jargon, what I tried to call here was the vertex, vertex uh, the pointy bit is called the vertex. Um, it slipped out of my mouse just earlier on. People love jargon all the time, so okay, that's sort of like the, the turnaround point of, a, of this U-shaped graph is called the vertex. So the vertex is at 3, 10. Piece of cake, just using my common sense. Uh, let's try another example. I'll do it in a different color, and let me see if I can just move my basic example out the, out the way. Let's sketch y equals negative x plus 5 squared minus 3. Again, social convention algebra is always do, look at the stuff inside the parentheses first and then work your way out through multiplications and additions, all that stuff in appropriate order. Looking at the parentheses, I see x plus 5, and that gets squared. That's telling me that negative 5 is behaving like 0. So that's telling me all the action is now going not at 0 anymore, but at negative 5. x equals negative 5 is the new 0 for the x values. All right. Um, I do have a steepness factor. It's this guy. It's going to be a flip upside down. It's going to make things upside down. Instead of pointing upwards, it's going to be a U-shaped graph pointing downwards. And everything's been shifted negative three units. Oh, so normally it's going to be a U-shaped graph pointing upwards, but it's now shifted to be pointing downwards. And everything's shifted down by a factor of three, by, by three units. So it must be an upside down U-shaped graph with vertex right there at negative five and negative three for the Y value. Gorgeous. Uh, that is me giving you the formula first and then asking to find the picture. It's always fun to go on a roller coaster ride backwards. So let's do this backwards. Let me give you the picture first and see if we can find a formula for it. Okay, I'm going to do it in green. Here is the graph of what's going to be a quadratic. I'll tell you it's quadratic, so a symmetrical U-shaped graph. This point is 4 and it crosses the y-axis at 6. Find me a formula for this. Ooh, this is different. All right, I'm just going to have a deep breath and just use my common sense and wits. Okay, I can see right away it's a U-shaped graph with x equals 4 behaving like 0. So it's going to be something like y equals x minus 4 squared and probably some more stuff going on. But there's 4 behaving like 0. Um, are there any shifts up and down going on? No, I guess it's still at the 0 level. So I guess plus 0, but I won't bother writing that. The only thing I'm not sure of is whether there's a steepness factor involved or not. Maybe it's just as it is, maybe I'm done. Or maybe it's two, two times this, or seven times this. I guess it's going to be a positive number because it's upward facing. Um, I don't know what the steepness factor is, so I'm just going to call it A. So I know the formula is of the type y equals A, sub steepness factor, x minus four squared. How can I work out what A is? Well, I could just plug in some points. I mean, I've got some information. I've got this point here, four comma zero, and I've got this point, zero comma six. Let's just choose one and plug it in. Um, maybe I'll plug this one in. When x is 4, y is meant to be 0. Put it in, so that tells me y is 0 equals a times 4 minus 4 squared is 0. Oh, 0 equals 0. Yes, that's true, but it's not very helpful. In fact, it's not surprising that using the point 4 comma 0 didn't get me any new information, because I actually kind of used this 4 already. This is a piece of information I haven't used at all yet, so I suspect putting in x equals 0, y equals 6 might be more helpful. Only way to find out is just try it. All right, x equals 0, y equals 6. Plug into this formula. 6 equals some steepness times um, 0 minus 4. That's negative 4 squared. That tells me 6 is 16a. Yep, I've got a value for the steepness. It's uh, 6 sixteenths or 3 eighths. Bingo. A formula for this curve, this quadratic curve, this U-shaped curve, is y equals 3 eighths x minus 4 squared. Beautiful. Um, let's do one more example before I run out of time. I'll clear this side of the board, which means I need to choose a different color. Things are going to be a bit smudgy. We'll just, just deal with it for the rest of this video. All right, I shall choose back to pink. Here is what I'm going to say is a symmetrical U-shaped graph. I'll tell you it crosses at the origin and at x equals 12, and this thing is 40 units high. Can't read that very well. It's a 40. Our challenge is, is find a formula for that graph. And all we've got is our wits and common sense and some basic information. All right. Well, if it's symmetrical, let's use symmetry. Where is this vertex? It must be halfway between 0 and 12 at 6. Great. 
So I know all the action has now happened.